went to the cinema last night um, and we had a gr- fantastic time. It's the brand new mm. romantic comedy. Uh, I'll give you the little uh, synopsis now. Uh, Bobby is a neurotic podcast host. Hmm. Imagine what, imagine that. Uh, who's happy to go on Tinder dates and content... Well, say Tinder dates. Grinder dates. And content yeah. not to have a... Si- oh, and content... Content. And content not to have... It's, a- it's, all, about, it's all about the output, bruv. It's all about the content. Gotta get them likes. <laughs> and content not to have a serious relationship. That all changes when he meets Aaron, an equally detached lawyer who likes to play the field. Repeatedly drawn to each other, both men begin to show their vulnerable sides and their undeniable attraction turns into something resembling a commitment. Uh, directed by Nicholas Stoller, who uh, has you know has a great backlog of films, uh, Getting to the Greek, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, a five-year engagement. He also co-wrote this with the star Billy Eichner, and it is the movie Bros!, um, now, and this is better than every film he's made so far. Don't get me wrong; I like, I, like, I actually really enjoyed getting to the Greek. Thought it was brilliant, and oh, a lot of people did. And Sarah I thought Marshall it was hilarious. Was Forgetting Sarah Marshall, brilliant again. But this is that felt like his almost like his university films. You know, his yeah, sort yeah, of silly kind of having teeth. a laugh films. This is like just on another level yeah 100% but now films. before we go into our review of bros uh, if you've never seen Billy Eichner who obviously I said he co-wrote it he's obviously the main star um, he made his name by uh, obviously doing Billy on the street now if you've never seen funny or dies Billy on the street it's kind of like it's it's billed as a comedy game show he basically goes around the streets yeah. of, of, of America and offers a dollar and asks crazy questions and he has amazing funnily enough, guests. Funnily enough, on his spe- Christmas special, he had Will Ferrell and they're both running around New York City yeah. in now, their Christmas onesie. He basically is this openly gay, hilarious comedian who is basically in very much the the same kind of ilk as Sasha Baron Cohen, as Borat, who he's not afraid... Mm. To, to fearless, fearless, absolutely yeah, fearless. Now I'm going to just play you a little clip of a Billy on the Street uh, little segment that I saw the other day, and I and I just want you to watch this. Oh, let's watch it. I just want you to listen to this because this is what it's about. He basically is is asking a woman uh, a question, and this is this is the this is basically what happens. Here we go. What? Who are you? I'm Billy Eichner. And okay, all right, so. And is this like TV or? Yeah, this is like television. Yeah. What television? Like Billy on the Street. Oh, okay. So are you an internet thing? Uh, no, it's actually a TV thing and an internet thing. <laughs> I don't like your attitude. Okay, I don't like yours. I'm on TV. Who, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit about you, bitch? What? <laughs> <laughs> that honestly had me creased. That had me absolutely creased. So you can imagine. The type of guy is like Cotney John said. He is fearless. He has co-written this film, which amazing, really, uh, that it is um, the f- amongst the first gay romantic comedies released by a major mm. studio and features an openly LGBTQ plus principal cast, which is amazing. And and obviously, it should not have been until 2022 that that has happened. Yeah. But bros, I'm going to hand it over to Cotney John. Give us your thoughts, mate. Mate, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So, it starts off, we get introduced to Billy's character, who's, you know, like you said, a neurotic podcast. And um, because, obviously, the subject matter was so important to him, the co-writer, the director, uh, they made sure that they got a lot of uh, LGBTQ plus history into the film. Yeah. Um, So throughout the film you're getting a bit of a history lesson but running alongside that you've got some very very meta humor uh where they keep talking about hallmark the hallmark channel yeah yeah don't they and uh the ending is basically a hallmark film ending it's yeah. absolutely brilliant and it, but the characters in it, you for the first 5 minutes i feel like i was very aware 
that I was watching a you know a first. Yeah, uh, I felt very aware. Oh, we're watching a gay film. Yeah. Um, after five minutes, that completely disappears, and you're just watching an absolutely brilliantly written, an amazing script, uh, rom com. But it's 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 better than a rom com. It's a better film than a rom com. You you're invested in the characters a lot more. You really want it to work out for everyone. Um, now, I know some people may be uh, put off, maybe because there are you know there's a lot of men kissing each other, a lot of men topless in bed together. Um, if that puts you off. Uh, chances are I think you're a dick and I don't care about you anyway. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, it, for me, it was just an amazing film. And I, I mean, I've been looking at the reviews and the scores and I'm pretty shocked at how poorly received this film has been so far. Well, funny, funny you should say that because I, obviously, after we watched it last night, I did a little bit of digging about it and, and obviously mm. it didn't, uh, it wasn't a hit at the box office. It didn't do as well as mm. it a hundred percent should have done. Uh, completely yeah. agree with all the points that you made there. And actually, before the movie was released, um, it was seen that it was getting trashed by homophobic people, by idiots, and right, they okay, were basically yeah. driving the scores down. Now, this is why this is why we hope that Adam and Courtney John's Big Movie Podcast will give you, from the front line, an honest view. An honest view from two mm. honest guys. Uh, obviously, you go on, like, Rotten Tomatoes or, uh, you know, IMDb, and people can go on there, and if they dislike the actor or they dislike the content mm. or whatever it may be, they can drive the scores down, which will mean that you might search the film and go, oh, is this worth a lot? Listen, if someone proposes a film to you, you go on the internet, don't you? You type it in. No spoilers, yeah. but you might see, oh, it's got it's only got 45% on Rotten Tomatoes. You, listen, if you fancy the film, I always say this, go and watch the film just to give it a go. Speak to people mm. who have seen it. Listen to this podcast and we will tell you. Bros <laughs> is up there for me as one of the best rom-coms I think yeah. I've seen in recent times. It's and just forgetting the subject matter, hundred percent, it's it breaks hilarious. Down, it breaks down. <laughs> it breaks down boundaries. It breaks down walls. It's. It's. Uh, I can't think of the tr- not trend setting. What's the w- word I'm thinking? Yeah, it could be trend setting. Trend yeah. setting. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's. It's absolutely hilarious for one. So if you are looking mm. for a laugh, Bros will deliver tenfold. If you're looking for you know heart, what? it will deliver tenfold. If mm. you're looking for escapism yeah. for an hour and a half it will deliver it's i think it's absolutely brilliant i think if anyone has been put off by that then you know grow up we're in 2022 sort your lives out it's absolutely brilliant the stars were fantastic it had heart it had comedy it had absolutely everything and the funniest thing is um, <coughs> we went to see it last night didn't we and it was yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty quiet. I know Man United were playing at the same time, mm. so commi- commitment <laughs> from me for missing the game. It's rare, um, but we were sat on the back. What about row. me? Well, you don't know who are they playing? <laughs> Football. <laughs> exactly. Everyone listening to this. Exactly. <laughs> Who were they playing football? That's all you need to know about Cotney <laughs> John's knowledge of the beautiful game. But we went in there and we sat at the back and we were we we were we were both up for it because we're we're fans of Billy Eichner anyway, fans of the director. It was always going to be decent. And then two women came in just before the start and they sat on the back mm. row, just a few seats up from us. And it got to. Uh, you know, the first five, ten minutes introducing the characters was really quick, was really funny. Mm. It kind of set the tone of what to expect. It was it was basically dead to go where other films have probably been afraid to go and to yeah, be as openly yeah. honest about homosexuality and, and LGBTQ plus uh, issues. And basically, within the first 50, or inside 15 minutes, there is a, a passionate scene between two men mm. and these two women just stood up and left they didn't they just stood up and left <laughs> and 
The worst bit about it was, it was hilarious. Yeah, the scene in question so is so funny. It's so <laughs> funny. And it, I mean, listen, each to their own. Maybe they thought that... You said a funny line, actually. What did you think you thought that they were watching? Or they thought they were watching what? You don't remember a funny line, nah, thing, do you? No. Nah. So, I mean, I'm always funny. No, you're not. This was a rare... <laughs> This is a rare funny line. You said, I bet they thought they were watching a Bross documentary. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, which, which, to be fair, is well funny because, obviously, bros spelt like the famous, uh, you know, 80s, 90s band Bross. And, um, yeah, they just got up and left. But uh, we, uh, Adam and Cody John's podcast, we are allies. We are, you know, we absolutely support LG, LB... Uh, LGBTQ plus and I bet they're well chuffed to have us clowns as allies (laughs) we are we are here for it and we you know we we watched that and we were you know it's weird I was in a weird way just happy and proud that something like that has been made now and it's out there and yeah people can go and watch it and it can it can open doors for other people and things like that and I'm hoping that that's what it does but let's get to the ratings mate uh, mm. because this this obviously has been given a glowing review from us it has, yeah. um, so uh cotney john how many sandies well, is bros getting well i've changed mine You've because changed yours? i i left the cinema and this is how good i think this film is and how important i think it is i left the cinema and i was like so four solid four all day now, there's a bit in the film, a very small subplot, uh, where Billy is talking to one of the other characters about education of children uh, regarding LGBTQ. And that sat with me all of last night and sort of halfway through the day. And I, it has actually caused me to go back through all my planning for sex education because as a lot of the listeners will know I'm a teacher my day job uh, at primary schools and actually alter the way I am teaching the understanding of LGBTQ plus uh, to younger children Um, I feel like I was looking at it uh, in the way the character was in the film right and it's really the film I completely agreed with the points that were made in the film and it has made it has had an effect on my life where it's changed it's influenced me to change something that I'm doing uh so for that reason that's given it the extra point to uh, make it a five sandies five sandies five sandies Billy yeah. Eichner, it was a it was a buzzing. four but it's a five now it's a five that after is, that I- because I suddenly realized the, for a film to have that much of an impact on me that quickly and change the way that something that I've been doing for the past 20 years means it, it's it got a good message and it's really got to me. So I think I was being unfair yesterday fair. when I decide, when I settled on a film. And it's funny you should say that because I came out of the cinema and I was thinking uh, that it was... Uh, I was thinking I'm going to give it four Harry Stampers. Um, mm. But actually, after sleeping on it and after thinking about the film... And decided you're homophobic and giving it a one. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, absolutely. Not. <laughs> it, it, to be fair, the opposite. It, 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 obviously, you know, we are allies. We've always been allies, and it's not that. But I think the the way they did it, and obviously, it is raunchy and it is rude and it is. Out yeah, so there. it's an adult, an it, adult yeah. rom com. But <laughs> I, I was giving it a four just because, obviously, I think a five you know needs to be pretty much bang on perfect Mm. but when i reflected on it and i got home and this is how i always judge movies when i don't watch them with my wife i always think uh yeah it was all right like and then and then it'll be a case of you know you you probably won't watch it because i won't watch it again kind of thing yeah and it was very similar to you know how i felt when i came out of top gun maverick was where i got home and i said to kim right we need to book and go and see it because you need to see this film and I said to Kim, right. I said to Kim, you need to watch this film. Now, obviously, it probably won't go to the cinema again because trying to get childcare is a nightmare. But when it becomes available to download to, to watch, obviously, it's not a, it's not a blockbuster, as in you don't need to see it on the cinema. But I think it's extremely important that people watch it. 
I think people yeah. who like comedy should watch it. And I think people who maybe need to just open up their mind a little bit more need to watch it. And I thought it was so well done and so funny. And I think how invested you are in that love story. And I'm a huge rom-com mm. fan. It's probably up there in one of my favorite genres. This is up there for me as a rom-com. And for that reason... I am giving it five Harry Stampers. So You're congratulations, as well. congratulations, bros! Congratulations, Billy Eichner, <laughs> uh, if you're listening. <laughs> and, Luke Mc- and Luke McFarlane, don't forget, Luke McFarlane was incredible. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So there he you have it, brilliant bros. The brand new romantic comedy out this year, recently out. It should be available to stream very shortly. I know it's available to stream in America. It's getting five Sandys from Cotney John. It's getting five Harry Stampers from me. It is well worth a watch.